welcome to the uh, Mendo Talk podcast. Um, big uh, thanks and shout out to our, to our sponsor, uh, Loved Ones Forever. Um, I'd like to introduce Nick, who's come along to share his story. And uh, you can say, sort of like, why men don't talk? Yeah? So, uh, yeah. how do we meet Nick? Uh, Rich, we, uh, thanks for inviting me anyway. And uh, yeah. we met in a fellowship and, uh, yeah. a few weeks ago. And mm. I come down there and have a little chat, mm. you know, done a little talk at that fellowship that night. And, uh, and you invited me onto your, mm. onto your podcast. And uh, I'm grateful for that as well. So many thanks here for that. Um, and my story really is is uh, about men don't talk. Is a mm. really a it's an old thing of my old life. Mm. It's a story of my life really. Um, I could be quite loud in certain settings, but that intimacy, um, talking and and relaying things to either a loved one or or even to my parents, you know, in times of need or or someone of authority. You know, maybe I would never think about talking to a teacher. Mm. And I've had a therapist through the years as well. And uh, even those, I could, I, I would avoid telling the truth. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I think this man ego was always getting me. You know, about, oh, do you know what? I really don't want to be talking about that. You know, I'll deal with it myself. And that's how I went through life until mm. it got to the stage where I could no longer deal with anything. You know, um, through my drinking and drug taking, it got me to a, a point of no return. And I was either going to go only one way, I was going to, be dead, or having seen a psychiatrist, um, he pointed me into a fellowship, and he said, "Do you know what, Nick?" He said, uh, "I really wish I could help you." He said, "But you need to go to uh, this place, this fellowship, twelve-step fellowship." He said, "Because they're the best place for you." And do you know what? That was probably the the, the first time that I ever took notice of anybody, really, you know, genuinely thought. Ah, oh, that fella. And, mm. and then he turned around and said, by the way, I've been in that fellowship for 30 years myself. And that struck me, because there was a man who had all the trappings. You know, he, you know, I was, I was seeing him either his, in his, in his uh, place in the Harley Street or his, or his house which overlooked the Thames, you know, down in Chelsea. And I thought, wow, he must know what he's talking about. And he had these credentials and, you know, he had, I knew that he had been involved with premiership football clubs and things like that. And uh, four days later, I found myself to a fellowship. And uh, it was when I walked through that door for the first time in that fellowship that I, uh, I can honestly say it was like my mother mm. wrapping her arms around me. My mum had passed on many years before that. And uh, she was like wrapping her arms around me and saying, welcome home, son, you're safe now. Mm. And, uh, and I grasped that opportunity with both hands, you know what I mean? The time was talking had begun. The time of opening up had begun. Mm. But I also knew there was a lot of action to be done and uh, mm. it changed my life. So when did you like, first... Well, now you've done a bit of work on yourself. Mm. Do you realise that you wasn't talking oh. at start? I mean, where did it start? Child working your way through... Well, I, I, as a child, I would isolate. Mm. So there, there, there could be 30, 40 of us. You know, I, I come from an estate in, in the east end of London from Bow, and there we, we had big estates. And uh, and uh, in that estate, you might have 30 of us all playing football. I mean, we, we, if there was cricket on, we'd be playing cricket. If there's football, we'd be playing football. And uh, and I, I found it uneasy. I enjoyed the sports. But I, couldn't, I, I found it really uneasy to actually talk and have a mm. friend I would have one person maybe that I would gyrate near you know be near and if they wasn't there then I didn't want to be mm. there vulnerable yeah yeah yeah, yeah I'll get that yeah, yeah I'll get that with growing up on an estate and yeah. we didn't talk about stuff oh, no. we talked about come on we talked about nicking thieving <laughs> drugs girls fanny <laughs> I, I, I'm not into football but we talked about other stuff yeah, mainly yeah. mainly what we was going to do next yeah, of course. and feelings didn't come into it no. every now and then one of us have a meltdown we'll have some yeah. form of meltdown and it all go mental and then you realize oh uh, old joe blogs is like his mum and dad split up or yeah. you know i oh, I'm, yeah. I go when i when i when my mum and dad split up I I, I I i soon took on 
uh, more drink and drugs. Yeah. You know, I, I just couldn't talk to anyone. You know, what I mean, mm. I just couldn't talk to anyone. Mm. And even before that, I come from a family of girls. So mm. what it happened is, is sort of like I. I mean, when people ask me, like, uh, would you would you hit a woman? And I'm, you, you know, I had to fight my sisters. I mean, because they <laughs> kick you fucking hard, kick you and scratch you. <laughs> like, but uh, you know what? The men, when we grow up, like, we we don't have the blueprint mm. to be parents. We don't have the blueprint to be men. Mm. Yeah, we just get flung out there. Do you reckon, like, oh well, and that's the way I see it. We just get flung out there and go, like, okay. Go and provide and survive. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, I think the, you're talking about when we was growing up and uh, I had a friend of mine and a uh, very close friend. Mm. I'd been on holiday with him. He was all in the flats. I knew his mum. Mm. And I thought I knew his dad. Anyway, one one night I'd come, come, come back around to the flats because I think I was caught in at the time. Mm. And he said, uh, he said to me, uh, Nick, I just want to tell you something. And we'd been up the pub and had a couple of beers. And I said, he was at the gates of the estate, and his estate was up there. Mm. Mine was there. I said to him, "I'll, I'll talk talk tomorrow." He went, "Well, no." He actually wanted to talk. Mm. Three days later, he killed himself. Threw himself out of a fifteenth floor window. Yeah, I found it growing up. A lot yeah. of people jump in front of trains, and <laughs> yeah. I mean, on my estate, it was overdose. Yeah, you know, uh, when the uh, heroin epidemic mm. hit the estate, it mm. ravaged through my friends wow. like a plague. Mm. By the time I'm in my um, my mid twenties, I've lost about twenty five guys wow. off that estate, wow. all for the same thing, you know. Like they was uh, talking about, uh, yeah, Reggie got to try this. And I said, what's that? They goes, yeah, you know what? It's heroin, you know. And they was smoking it, and they was all vomiting, yeah, <laughs> like that. Right? I looked at my went, nah, nah. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, roll on the yeah. clock till I was forty six, mm. and every time I'm having a line, mm. I'm vomiting. Yeah, Every cool. time, and and it, it was just like more of a, a slower death. A friend of mine recently, um, well, a, an acquaintance yeah. from that same estate, yeah. same age as me. Yeah. I'm fifty, and uh, he um, he finally succumbed to the effects of heroin abuse. Yeah. That's all them years yeah. of pain and torture, as we know, because yeah. we've worked about it and kind yeah. of looked at ourselves under a very very large microscope. Yeah. You understand what I mean? This yeah. microscope is massive because by the time we come in, it's like massive, mm. you know, and and kind of, uh, um, you know, it's the first time I managed to actually had a uh, have a, have conversations with uh, with with other men. I've got I've got quite a, a few, not a, not a load. I need a, I only need a, I only need a team. I don't need an army. Mm. And uh, there's a few guys that uh, I will call them up regular. You know, and kind of, uh, this is what how we talk. Uh, one is, yeah. is is the guy who takes me through this work, and one is my, the one who started taking me through it. And um, you know, and so tell a funny story. I rang one, I rang uh, my mate up today, and I said, "There's a there's a new film out, and it's called Cocaine Bear. <laughs> it's a fucking cocaine a bear. That fucking they, all these, they they dropped all these parcels from mm. the sky, right? And, mm. and the bears had a fucking parcel, right? <laughs> <laughs> What's happening? He starts sneezing at coke and everything. And the thing is, he was like, uh, my friend really was talking, and he's like, but even that, uh, to have an on-the-level conversation mm. with someone, you know, when you was growing up, Absolutely. you know, d did you talk to your father? Did you have no, anything? No, 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 no. I didn't, I didn't speak. Is, is that through circumstance or? No, no, no. You know, he's a he was a nice fella. He was a man's man. Mm. You know what I mean? And uh, as a man's man, he ain't talking. Well, yeah. this is the thing about yeah. um, about men don't talk. Yeah. Um, we grow up. Let's see what it is. I think it's somewhere we it's balance, but mm. we can't teach balance. You have mm. to experience balance yes, yeah. because you have to go both ends of the scale in order to get balance. Mm. You know, and um, I mean, my father was so shut down through the death of my brother that I, 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 like, and with that type of thing, I don't even know if it, it was kind of how I was desensitized. Mm. You know what I mean? And like my mum and my dad, and I was brought up in a family of grief, and I, that's the way I see it. You ask me my first mm. early childhood memories is standing around a graveside, not knowing wh why I'm crying, but wanting to open my Christmas presents. Mm. You know, I grew up with that, and uh, you know what I mean. And then it moves goes on yeah. further. Mm. You know, so when you when you was younger and you was growing up, when did you realize that you you, you, you know obviously. 
you found you found something in uh, drinking drugs that yeah that, that, do you know that, that kind of worked for you didn't it yeah it did Rich but I've got to tell you I never you know I was growing up I felt different but I had no idea mm. um, what what it was with me I had no idea I just I thought that my life that was normal mm. you know I thought the isolation was normal not being able to talk was normal. Yeah, when I've had a few drinks, I'll be, oh, Jack the Lad and all that laugh, you know. He's a fun, he's a laugh and all that laugh. Or when you had a bit of personality yeah. powder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> you, know, you have something that lights them up, doesn't yeah, it? You know what right, I mean? That's exactly you, right. And do you ever have any mates that took it and they just went all yeah. fucking dull? Paranoid. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, right. Paranoid. Well, I, I hid yeah. behind curtains. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I, 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 I used yeah. to have, like, knives in the drawer, right, and I... I, I used to have all my pals around and uh, I used to sit there, right? Yeah. And all my fucking knives are gone. Mm. And I'm thinking, where the fuck are these knives yeah. gone? And they've got them all. Yeah. <laughs> but the thing is, they go to me, yeah, but someone might have followed just us. Case. <laughs> it's just, just, just in case. Just in case knife. Yeah, but someone, someone might have followed us, yeah. right? They go, who's that? And I said, it's no one. It's no. the fucking milkman. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yeah, if yeah, that yeah. was when the milkman was, I'm telling you, show my age now. You know what I mean? Yeah. I was a milkman. Yeah, yeah well, you was a, I was a milkman. I was a milkman for a little while. I've done it for a year. Yeah, but a milkman is yeah. like, you, you talk to people when you you're a milkman. Ah, well, I, you, you sort of... Uh, well, it is early if you've got their early door yeah, one. It's, it? Yeah, but the, the, again, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's you're on your own. Mm. You're isolating, you're on your own. Because, you know, very few people... Mm. You know, you can say hello and that chirpiness, you know what I mean? Mm. Very few people. I mean, I've become a, a taxi driver in London. It's another, it's another very, very lonely... How old was you when you become a taxi driver? Uh, just, I think I was just 22, 23. 20, 20, 20, 23. I think I'd just gone 23. A little birdie tells me that you're the most angriest cab driver yeah, in London. Is that right? right? Yeah. yeah I've done How a, did you get that label? Well, actually, yeah, we was doing this. Um, they asked for uh, volunteers to do a show for the BBC, mm. and what they've done is they've talking about um, whether omega three in a, in our fish diet yeah. could be reduce the, the stress <laughs> levels. <laughs> Right. But how much they, how much they give you? Right. Exactly. <laughs> Fucking lorry load of it, turn up. <laughs> Get on with that. I started flat. I grew flippers yeah. and everything. At the end. And and, uh, and I went wow. And uh, so I done this thing, and mm. it was a bit of a sham, really. It was with a celebrity athlete and things like that. Mm. It went on for about twelve weeks. And um, they would, f- you know, feed us, feed me, and all that. And then, well, they and, feed your fish. Yeah, we're yeah. <laughs> not tuna, and we you can actually you feel like a fucking cat. The, the trouble is, it's not yeah. it's, it's <laughs> fucking God, tuna. It was, it was pre internet, right? Yeah. So you can't find it on the uh, on. Are we on sure? Internet. I reckon. I reckon well, we can well, let's, find let's, it. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> we can see you so, with a fucking yeah. so, a, a bowl of cat food, <laughs> a fish food like that. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, that's the way it was, and. Uh, mm. That what they wanted, what they really wanted was the most extreme angry cab driver and see if it could, you know, calm it down. I mean, so you must have a, had a reputation by well, then. Well, what they, 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 <laughs> you they, they, they actually yeah, it do. Yeah, yeah. I, I got put forward for mm. it. <laughs> was it a shortlist? <laughs> shortlist, yeah. <laughs> and, and then uh, out of the 12 cab drivers, yeah. it was found out that I was the angriest one. Yeah. Out okay. of them. And what they'd done is they put a camera in the cab and everything to... to as I was going through the day, and obviously it had to be somewhat curtailed, mm. otherwise, what would happen? A lot of swearing? Yeah, it was a fair bit. Yeah. But a couple <laughs> of times they put a plant. So as I was come out of the, the place, you know, like of a studio mm. where they've just done a short shoot, they'll have a person at the corner who'll flag me down straight mm. away. And, uh, and I've got a camera in the thing, and he would deliberately go out. I didn't know he was mm. a plant, but he would deliberately go out and wind me up. And out of that, I'm going, yeah, mate. You know, <laughs> I, I, I'm going, it was a BBC centre, yeah. and you get onto the uh, the A40, the, yeah. the West Way, to go into Central London yeah. when you go into Mayfair. And all of a sudden, I'm going down the A40. I'm going, "Here, yeah, mate, I'm going to tell you now, you're getting the fuck out." Of here. <laughs> you know, and this is on a dual <laughs> fucking motorway in the mid air, isn't it? The motorway, the A40. Yeah. I said, "You carry on, you're getting out." Yeah. And he goes, "Yeah, yeah, you're all right." I went, and then I'm slamming on the brakes, going, "Out, get the fuck <laughs> out!" You know what I'm saying? And uh, anyway. That's where it was. So at the end of the 12 weeks, they, they've announced me that uh, I am the angriest cab driver in London. Yeah. And uh, it was a wonderful accolade. You've mm. got no pres- no prizes or presents for it. You, but, you know, just, it, a, just, a, just a lot of stress. <laughs> just a lot of stress, really. Yeah. How yeah. did you feel like after you got wound up about that, you know? 
Like when you realise that, yeah, I mean, you seem a very light-hearted guy. But what did you say when you like when you realised he was a plant on the corner? Did you, you take it, or do you think you fucking gets? Well, that's well, that's you know, it, some of the things I suffer from is holding resentments. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And uh, in the in the past, so yeah, of course. And I, I got to that thing, stage where I say, well, you're doing that to get me going. Mm. You know, you know, after, you know, you're not worried about the after mm. effects. I've got to go to work. Mm. You know, that's the beginning, maybe at the beginning of my shift. Mm. I've got to do another 10 hours of trying to earn a living and you've just wear me up. Mm. Have you got a lot of opinions on stuff? Yeah. yeah. As opposed to, like, obviously being a taxi driver, like, well, you're going to get loads of different types of people coming up. And blah, 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 blah. Yeah, well, look, look. You know? Again, there's lots of myths in, like, mm. in, in everything, you know. So the myth that uh, cab drivers are always constantly talking with their punters mm. and that don't happen. Mm. Most of them, you know, we're a service, so they just want to just get on and mm-hmm. get to where they want to do. The only time they really chirp up is they think they know a better way or do something better yeah. and things like that, and that's fair enough. I mean, like, thank God I'm no longer a cab driver, yeah. you know what I mean? So how did your, um, I mean, obviously you, you was fueled by, not fueled by Omega-3, you was fueled by uh, uh, substance. What substance was you fueled by? <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, I, I, look, it wasn't Lucas Aid, was it? No, it wasn't. No. No, look, look. I, you know, I was, a, I was a big cocaine user, yeah. you know what I mean? So, uh, uh, towards oh, the end of it, me driving really, not mm. in the beginning, but well, I, I, see, this is another thing. I, I sometimes lose the ability to put time on things, mm. and yeah, of course, it was. You know, if I'm coming, I've been out all night long, and I'll come in, I've got to go to work, I've got family mm. to sort of keep, yeah, you know, and so you've got the after effects of the drink, the drugs, mm. you know, and then I think, oh, I've got to have a little life in there now. Mm. Oh, yeah, I used to do you that. Know, so yeah, I have stereo. Yeah. You know, I mean, not just one. I'll, I'll have one. I think that other <laughs> nostril's fucking hell, mate. You know? <laughs> so I'm having liveners and then the liveners, and then on the way home, I've got to have something to bring mm. me down. Mm. So then I'm, I'm, I'm on my way home and I'm necking a bottle of vodka mm-hmm. just so that I get yeah. home and I ain't, like, my heart ain't going yeah. pump, 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 yeah. pump, pump. You know, and uh, that sort of thing all the time. It, but again, it was a very isolating, it was very, mm. it was a job. Again, it, it was a nice isolating mm. job. Never really had no, you know. I I, I had my license for finished up over thirty three years, and uh, I can't. I don't. I have got no friends mm. from that time of thirty three years working. Yeah, but you weren't because you're working your own. Yeah, that's you, exactly you, you understand right. what I mean. So there's no one I can open up to. Yeah, or anything else, and tell them about my little issues. You know, what I mean, mm. we're talking about. You know, I'm just keeping yeah. everything is bottled up. Mm. I go home. And bless her, that you know my ex-wife. Mm. You know, um, I, I felt, you know, my mother, my father never spoke to my mum about his issues. In the, and um, did you ever find out what his issues? Well, no, but, but I would say this because they because we come from like you're fifty plus, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. sixty. I was just you're sixty, 60 yeah, just turned sixty. 60 so yeah. your your father must have been affected by the Second World War. My, my father was a fireman in the Blitz. Oh, so, you know I mean? yeah, but the thing is, they must have seen a lot of... I think it was approximately around about 40-odd 40, 40 thousand people died in London in the well, Blitz. So they yeah. must have pulled people out. And that must have been very traumatising for... Because my, my grandfather uh, was in the war. Mm. And, and my other grandfather was mm. kind of... I don't know what he was doing, mm. but um, he, like, he was in the war. And when he come back, he was shell shocked and all that. And so my mum saw all that stuff, mm. you know, like this guy that was kind of just shut down yeah, and yeah. kind of. And but the thing is, also as well, when we say like men don't talk, and the thing is that they had a reason. There was no counselling in them days, was no. there? There was nothing to kind of no no. Uh, and if they if they got on the drink and all that, like they would probably die from <laughs> this, you know. A lot of them. Yeah. In that age, you know what I mean? Because remember, the, the, the fellowship had already been set up mm. at that stage. But in England, it wasn't as, uh, I mean, it probably was just cracking, just starting, you know? Yeah, well, my, my father didn't, he just dad went out a few points. Mm. We talked about, I just say, because I mentioned about it in my book about mm. my dad, and uh, not only was he, he was a, a fireman, he's uh, in the First World War. Mm. Two of his brothers got killed in the First World War. That's yeah. why he was allowed to become a fireman. One of them lied about it at their age mm-hmm. to get into the war. Yeah. And he, he, yeah. I think he got killed at 15 or 16. His brother, my dad's first wife, mm. died of an illness. I think she was in her late late 20s, early 30s, mm. and left him with three children. Mm. 
Shortly after that, he found my, he met my my mother, mm. and then went on to have another three children. And he, you know, he's a, a man. He he brought up. He was bringing up those three children on his own. You know, and, uh, and just, he, he never had no one to talk. No, to. no. So no. this is a kind of thing, you know, when uh, they talk about toxic shame, about mm. owning other people's yeah. stuff. You know, yeah. I, I I suffer from generations of toxic shame. Mm. You know, it's only when we start working in a twelve step fellowship that we can actually start. We can heal anyway if yeah. we need to, if we put the right action in. Yeah, but I do believe there is a connection mm. with. Uh, 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 sifting through that wreckage mm. and, and kind of like we say eat the chicken and spit out the bones mm. yeah, you know yeah, what I mean yeah, and yeah. kind of and then we're left with the rest so we're left mm. for whatever we can yeah. deal with yeah. you know whatever's palatable yeah. you know mm. so when you was um, after you finished the uh, was you still a cab driver when you was in, uh, a roaring addict and then you stopped and then what yeah what, what it was I, I, I was a, a cab driver to the walls the end mm. but I was incapable of actually working I was a uh, by that time, the drink it was by that time it's just gone on to the mm. drink, um, and I couldn't, I, I'd lost the, the power to go and work, mm. and I was being re housed, I was being housed by one of my sons mm. at the time, and then misfortune went his way, and then mm. I had to move up to Essex, um, to be with my sister. Mm. I lived up there with her by that time, I'd come into the fellowship, into mm. a fellowship, and I was already working in the, putting action in the program, you know. And my life started changing. Mm. It started changing, and I and I met a, a, a chap in the fellowship who who become very close to mm. me, and that I could actually talk to, and that was the first person that I would actually s- talk to him about what I was feeling. I, I had the same experience with uh, with when I come in, I, and I was fifty five yeah. there, Rich. Yeah. Well, I was forty six. You know, I I, I forty six. I thought I fucked my life up. <laughs> yeah. Fuck my life up. Yeah. I looked at it and I thought, what is left? Mm, mm, you know? Yeah. And and then and then and then you find you spoke about that going in that room and, and I, I got the same feeling from my first meeting and I went in there and I went, fucking hell. Like I wasn't scared, I wasn't worried, I knew that if I carry on doing this yeah. stuff, I, I saw already saw it in the lives of other people. Mm. I already saw their fucking eyes were beaming, and I yeah, thought, well, I want, I want some of that. I want that would it? Doesn't you know, I want that. Yeah. First yeah. time in my life, I ever wanted to be like mm. somebody mm. else. Yeah. yeah, even though I wanted to be like someone else in a different sense, I wanted, I, I really wanted what they had. Mm. You know, and I wanted. It was the way that was, the honesty yeah. that I first got. Mm. You know, honesty. Mm. You know, mm. and then. We look back at sort of like, um, I look back at my life and realise that I never really spoke to anyone throughout all of my life. No. You know? I, and I never done that. And and then and then you come into the fellowship and, you know, I mean, I, I mean I, I've got no bones in saying that I, I've tried to take my own life yeah, yeah, on more yeah, than one occasion. Yeah. I'm, I'm like yeah. kind of, I'm honest about mm. that. And I've tried. And yeah, I, me I, too. Me and too. I was in them kind of, I, I was in such a, so many, oh, well, you have to be mm. in a dark place, but, you know, uh, the f- the third time I was in blackout and I, and, I, mm. and I'm I'm just so grateful that uh, like mm. you know what I mean my higher power or whatever yeah. took that thought away. I knew because I, I found my belongings, yeah. but I knew that it, it, it happened. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And and the thing is, there's nothing worse than you know the amount of times when we take ourselves close to OD, right? Yeah. And we sit there and we take ourselves to OD, and I, <sighs> the next day I dodge the bullet here, you know. It didn't stop. <laughs> it did stop me, you know. You know look, I, I've 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 been uh, without a drink or a drug for over five years, and uh, you know, and uh, my last time mm. when I thought of killing myself, mm. I was drinking drug free. And how did that happen? That that was that. Um, oh, I've got to tell you the truth. Mm. It was being manipulated by a, a group of women mm. um, that I felt you give of yourself, you know, in a, in a working capacity. Mm. Uh, what actually happened? I uh, I'd been working for uh, with autistic people, mm-hmm. and I was working as a night person, you know, through the night. So I was a bit tired, and that. and uh, and I would always be as helpful as I can, not only in the work capacity but in the private capacity mm-hmm. with some of the girls we work with, and that. And then they take your kindness for foolishness, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And next thing you know, I felt really hard done by. And I remember coming off my shift half past seven. And literally, uh, three or four of them had set upon me. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And I went, whoa, what's all this about? What's all this about? So I went, look, just the fuck, get the fuck mm. away from me. You know what I mean? Listen, you know, 
I know you're you're protect. I've done nothing fucking wrong here. Mm. You know, I, I've done a little. I was a bit silly. I was just to spend some money on people. You know what I mean? But I thought fucking hell, and then and I thought, well, you know, this is not like me saying, "Oh, poor old me." Mm. This was genuinely fucking happening. Do you know what I'm saying? And I went, you know, there's this like thinking, "We well, are fella." Well, that gives you a, a right to abuse me because mm-hmm. I'm a fucking fella. Yeah. You know what I mean? This this God given right they've got to abuse me. So I fucking went home. I bought the dog. Come back. I was put my nut down to have a little sleep and all of a sudden within 15 minutes my head's gone it's mm. woken up and all I've got in my head is these people all around me they're not around me they're in my mind they're all around me and I live on the third floor and I've only got one option it's to go through that window and I remember going through, I think I've got to go because I just couldn't get it out of my head you mm. know that feeling just help me I'm just thinking Help me out. I just got mm. to go. And I thought, well, could I get to the doctors? Could I do this? Could I do that? And luckily, I'm talking about high power moments, mm. my phone went. And it was a very good friend of mine uh, who I grew up with. You know, he's one of my closest friends who lives in Spain. He's a mm. nice fella. Uh, he's a washer teacher out there and he, you know, and he uh, works in in the arbor. And uh, he phoned me, how you doing, Nick? Mm. Oh, wow. Just broke, he broke that thing. You know, he just broke my thought pattern of thinking, I just can't take no more. And into that, I went into a complete breakdown. Mm. We had a complete and utter meltdown. And it's funny, because uh, when I went into that meltdown, you think everyone's going to come around and rally around you. They're going to they're gonna look after mm. I'll work in care. They're going to look after you. Yeah. You'll, 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 you'll manage your rest, mm. the woman. Your, your other staff needs the women, the, your team leaders, women. They're all going to rally around you. Nothing. Nothing at mm. all. You're going to go and get their, they promise you this counselling thing. Right? Yeah. Part of your contract is a 12 counselling things. Nothing. Absolutely nothing happened. And the only thing they, the only thing that they seem to be doing, and this is, it happened all the way through, mm. it's all been logged was they completely, continually messed up my wages for the next six months mm. whilst I was on sick leave and things like that, you know what I mean? And it was a continual battle. And when you would m- pick up the phone or you'd go there and meet up with them, you know, mm. even though I was mentally not right, it was almost that thing about, well, what's the matter with you? Buck your ideas up. Now, mm. whilst I was working there previously... If one of the women, they come, we've all got a supporter. Mm. One of the women yeah. had any small little issues, I don't know, giving her husband all the money or whatever they used to make out. Or oh, they've got a supporter. Let's all support her. As a bloke, we got put with the most challenging people with no support. You're a bloke, you should be able to handle that. <laughs> that yeah. I'm only going on, that's my experience. They don't have separate training for a man mm. or a woman. No. They? they have and the same training and, and then all of a sudden it, it's kind of shoved on you, isn't it? But yeah. I was very capable. Mm. Yeah, but the thing is, you. yeah, but the thing is, this is one thing uh, about um, uh, uh, what's uh, expected strength. Absolutely. You know, strength. Uh, guidance, yeah. uh, but the thing yeah. is, no control though, because damn, if you go and yeah. don't go down the control yeah. route, because if you're controlling, you'll be like fucking one of them fucking toxic men, you know yeah, what I mean? Absolutely. You know, so what it is, it, it kind of, um, uh, it kind of like just snowballs, and yeah. I, I mean, I get that, yeah, you know, and uh, I just you know at the end of it, right? I mean, look, I was very capable with my job. Mm. I went from the Angus cab driver, yeah, right in London. To having going into the into the fellowship, mm. making, you know, doing that program yeah. to the best of my ability, making amends, seeing where I was mm. to blame, all those sort of things, and then getting by my high power, getting put into a, a job that I was really grateful mm. to take at a time in my life where I'd just been rehoused mm. by the council after living in a caravan for nine months, mm. right? So I was grateful. Well, the gratitude was it. And I learned a lot from that job about humility, how hard people worked for very mm. poor money. Do you know what I mean? But the, dip- the disparity between women and men yeah. working there is incredible. 
I mean, is this the first platform you spoke about this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. For, I'll give you, for instance, I would be, um, so some, some of the people you'd be dealing with would be two to one. So mm. it'd be two of you have to be with them or be one to one. So you'd be on your own. Guess what? All the men got one to one. All right? So that you'll be isolated again. Mm. You'll be all on your own. The women, two to one. It just so happens that the people they were dealing with could be left alone in their own flats because we supported living. And I was situated in a flat downstairs uh, looking after this chap who had to be mm. with him all the time. He was quite violent as well. Six foot four lad. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And uh, all you could hear them upstairs chatting, chatting, ha ah, ha, laughing for the whole of the eight hours with the occasional break in it. Mm. You know, and you, you know, you go out there and they're also quiet. Don't want to say mm. nothing. So, you know, if if it was if it was the other way around, it'd be out mm. more. The environment you're in now, though, how is that different? Well, the environment is now of a. Uh, I've not gone back to work. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I haven't been able to go back to work. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'm waiting on a couple. Of, look, I've got other illnesses. I've had cancer. You and, said you yeah. had. Yeah, you had. Yeah. It. So uh, I had cancer when I came in uh, five, six years ago. Mm. Uh, and that got done. That's how I lost the sight in one of my eyes. That's how I lost mm. the ability to drive a cab. Mm. Apparently, you can't be a blind cab driver. No mm. help. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> or, a blind, or a blind javelin thrower. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's things you got done. You know, I've you know, got other issues mm. now. We, we tend to, a bit guys in recovery, I, I mean, I, I, it's either BD or AD. Mm. Yeah, before <laughs> drugs or after drugs. You know, uh, and. Uh, like I kind of the life that I've got now is kind of polar opposites mm, to to mm. what I to what I I, I lived, mm, mm. you know. And it's through lived experiences. I'm mm. grateful that I'm alive, you know. I'm grateful that I'm alive mm, and kind of, mm. um, and I'm 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 able to to communicate and talk yeah. to people, have relationships because, you know, we we. We, one thing that we, we don't do is we learn how to do relationships. You mm. know, we haven't got the blueprint for relationships Absolutely like right. we spoke about. Yeah. We haven't got that blueprint. And we haven't got that kind of um, guidance which you spoke about, kind of. I mean, I had some very good times with my father when I was younger, mm. you know. Mm. Um, I mean, I had very good times with him. And, mm. and But the thing is, uh, as, soon as, the, uh, as soon as the substance got me, yeah, kind of... Uh, Really, the writing was on yeah, the wall. Yeah. You know, I look back at it now, and I, 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 I don't even. Do you know what? I, I think I had to, um, I had to go through that level of pain mm. in order to to have this level of uh, of, of serenity. In some cases, Absolutely. you know, yeah. I, I, I did touch serenity mm. once. Mm. You know, I, I've touched yeah. serenity a few times. I'm driving along. I'm driving along in a car, listening to some music. I thought, fucking all the sunlight come down. I thought, wow. It lasted for about a minute, 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I thought, mm -hmm. I'll have that. Mm -hmm. And then I've gone to see my uh, my grandkids. And my granddaughter's come running over and she jumped on me and she put her head on my shoulder. She said, I love you, granddad. Mm -hmm. And I only saw her the day before and she said, I've missed you. Wow. And what I realised was that, you know, serenity's not gone away mm. <laughs> I just I was blind and I was deaf yeah. you know mm. and kind of I get that when when we're um, when we come through the rabbit hole it's yeah. so easy to go back like oh, you said yeah. because there's nothing to say that you you know you come off and you go skipping down the path and everything else and mm. everything's gonna mm. kind of be it's all right and you're gonna have this and you're gonna have mm. that and you know there's nothing like that you have to put the effort in because I do believe you 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 put a lot of effort mm. and passion into what you do in order to keep your sobriety you have to you know in 20 days time I'll be four uh, four years well you know so the thing is, I count the days because the days are important. Mm. You know, I write a diary every night and I write, I do all that stuff. Mm. But the thing is, what well, it is the, um, especially with mental health around because th that was uh, what the experience you spoke about about kind of wanting to jump out. Yeah. Uh, out of thing. Yeah. I mean, that's real. Absolutely. You know? I think there's a lot of guys. The statistics show that a lot of guys actually. Uh, um, uh, go through with uh, and end oh, up dead, yeah, 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 you know. Yeah. Uh, and and there's loads of different. I mean, we could talk about the percentages. We could talk about the stuff yeah. like the, the court system isn't geared up for men, you know. Yeah. Uh, and and it's not. 
I, I mean, I don't matter whatever way they want to look. There is isolated cases. I spoke to a gentleman the other day and he, he took on his kids and stuff and, uh, you know, um, uh, and he took, and I, and I fucking all that, that was such a fucking brave thing you've yeah, done, yeah. you know, and that, and he, and, and, and the mother doesn't want to, uh, 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 it's all sort of stuff. I, I can only go by what he said to me. I don't know. And the thing is, look, what it boils down to is, you know, um, how could we teach other men that we can talk, but mm. without doing all that feeling shit? Yeah. You know, yeah. you understand what I mean? Absolutely yeah. Right. Like, you understand, we can have a general conversation yeah. without going down. Because mm. I speak to some women, they cry for an hour a day. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they cry know. for three hours a day. What do you <laughs> cry about? <laughs> Listen, I've just, I've just uh, finished a relation, finished yeah. in a relationship with a girl just would cry. Yeah. You know, it's what do, what's all that about? I, I, I just cry. See, the thing. Cry, cry, cry. And if she I don't dis- understand that. If she disagreed, mm. she would just cry. You know, yeah. she, was, she was saying to me, um, I've known this fellow mm. and uh, I've known him for years and we go, we'd like to go to the cinema. Mm. I said, well, you actually going out with me now? Said, Why do you want to go mm. to the cinema with a geezer? Yeah. Well, well, there's nothing in it. I said, well, you know, mm. you know, look, I, 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 look, I'm monogamous, you know what I'm saying? If I'm mm. with a girl, I'm with a girl. The days of me doing other things, mm-hmm. you know, drinking drug-filled days. You are 60 now. You know? <laughs> I mean, come on. You are 60. I'm, I mean, I am 50. Mind I mean, you, she was 35. Yeah, so well, there you go. Look, come on. Yeah? You know, but... Yeah. Look, but you talk about... Let's, let's talk about the blokes and they're not talking. Look, I'm... I'm I'm grateful mm. in my recovery. Look, I do Swellside, Elmley, mm. Stanford Hill, Rochester mm. and Mason Prisons. I've done Rochester, you know, Pentonville, uh, you go, Brixton... So. You know, kind of, you and know. you go in. So you know what I'm talking. You're yeah. going in there. There's fellas, right, with a little mm. bit of help, a little bit of guidance, mm-hmm. and able to take the right action. It's a feral environment, yeah. isn't it? You, you know, know what I'm like saying. Kind of, there's people jumping in. They don't know. Yeah. And the thing is, and then they've got there guidance, well. guidance, guidance. You know, my son has got um, he's got a mentor in school, mm. and he says like, yeah, I have chats with my mentor. I think, thank you. Mm. <laughs> you understand yeah, what yeah. I mean? I don't care. Like I said to him, look. Look, if he's your mentor, level with him. Yeah. You know, level with him. He, he texted me the other day. He said, Dad, how many days until you're four years? Mm. You know, mm. this stuff, yeah. you know, this stuff brings families back. Yeah, absolutely. You know, in some cases, listen, like I, I, you know, I said to my daughter once, she said, Dad, everyone in the world hates me. I said, you haven't met everyone yet. <laughs> you, know, you understand what I mean? I think yeah. someone mentioned that yeah. years ago and I love using it. You know, yeah. you know we love it. We love, like what it is, um, you know, I've learned, like, oh, fucking all the stuff that I've done in in, in, in the work that I've done it, uh, on myself, my journey of self-discovery, mm. is kind of, um, I've enjoyed it. Oh, of course. I've enjoyed looking yeah. from, looking at myself under the microscope. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm. and the thing is, I've learned not to judge myself mm. on it because I've been there and I've done it, I've lived the yeah. experience, and do you know what? I'm really grateful that I'm alive, yeah. Yeah. you know? I mean, I couldn't picture myself standing on that bridge in Blackout on on the 15th of December, mm. you know, 2018, you know, like mm. on that bridge there, mm. you know. I never got clean until the 27th. Mm. Like, I, I would say I, I'm, a, uh, like, I'm a complete abstinence. I can't do nothing. Do you know what? The other day, right? Yeah, I, I think you identify with this. The other day, I, I went into my, uh, air, I like the bakers, right? I think I just plugged them as... Yeah, right. Yeah, that used to be my bakers as well. And on a Friday, I like this chocolate ganache cake. Mm. Right? Yeah, listen, listen. Yeah, chocolate ganache. Right. Mm-hmm. I've gone in there and got it. Yeah, but next to it was a bigger sponge cake. Yeah, with chocolate on the top. Listen, <laughs> listen. Yeah. So I've got it home and I fucking put. I thought I have a cup of cup of mm. coffee and I, you know, I finish work and I'm washing the washing the day off for me. And I thought I cut it in half. Right. Yeah, I cut it in half. I'm talking to someone on the phone. I've got all this cream going down my face mm-hmm. and everything. Oh, I fucking love it. Do you know what? I didn't even think any any further than go over to that box and take the other half and eat the other half. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then I'm sitting there with oh, like, oh, loads of guilt. <laughs> 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 Do you know the insanity round what yeah, I did, does. right? Yeah. I never mm-hmm. ate until the next day, right? Oh, yeah. 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 You understand what I mean? So look, I've been, I've been greedy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And now I'm going to starve myself. Yeah. For the, fa- for the mm-hmm. sake, sake of it. But the thing is, this is what it teaches. This is what this has taught me. Mm. It's taught me to one, you know, grow up. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Come on, you was a fifty-five-year-old baby. You know mm. what I mean? Same. I was a forty-six-year-old oh. baby. I never had a clue. I wanted it all my way. Mm. 
and then all of a sudden I haven't got it my way. Yeah. You know, and, and I've had to to um, uh, um, plug into this stuff, mm. you know. Yeah. And uh, so anyway, look, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about your book here. Yeah, we've got your book here. Yeah, it's a nice picture there. <laughs> yeah. It was only last year. This time last a, year. It was only was... last year. Look, we look at the book. Look, you see the book there, right? Yeah. Okay. This is, uh, it's not, it's not too late to be great. I like it. You yeah. know, my story of recovery. Uh, Nick, can I say your second? Yeah, of course name? you can. How would you say, Sir? Well, Nicky Sewell. Yeah. Sewell. Yeah, yeah Nicky Sewell. Um, and it's not not too late to be great. You know, yeah. and it's my story of recovery. Yes. You know, I wrote a book when I was in active addiction, yeah. mm. and it was mm. called "Facing My Demons." Right. Oh, wow. I was in active yeah. addiction. I yeah. wrote. I've written it out. It's all written out. Mm. And I remember I was just finished a, 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 a benzo addiction. I was addicted wow. to opiates, yeah. uh, and that was another one of my addictions. <laughs> And I wrote this book, and it was like a, it was like a thousand pages long. Mm. I remember the fucking tears, mm. like doing a massive yeah, step four, yeah, yeah. yeah. And like it was kind of, uh, I should have called it Reggie's resentments. But <laughs> the thing is, that I wrote this book. Mm. I've, I've given it to my therapist. And my therapist said, like Reg, like you mm. know what, mm. it's good. I goes, what do you mean? <laughs> like, I already read it, <laughs> you know. But in that book, I wrote about a suicide attempt. Yeah. You know, when I took yeah. all these, uh, all the tablets, I think I geared myself yeah. up for it, and yeah. I, I, I ended up with more and more tablets, and I, I had enough to go. Yeah, you know, and I went into a coma, and, my, uh, yeah. and the police yeah. kicked the door down, yeah. and they found me. I'm on restricted yeah. tablets yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, I cannot even take uh, a paracetamol yeah. successfully. I have to, what I have to call yeah. someone and say, look, I'm on this stuff. See, this is another yeah. thing with medication yeah. because we we get given this medication, yeah. and we're, I, I mean, I'm an addict. So what happens is I get given this medication and they don't know what I just say thank you like yeah. that you know and yeah. I have to watch every yeah. single yeah. tablet I put inside yeah. me. I have blood pressure yeah. tablets and uh, they restrict me about the blood pressure tablets so I get oh. out at one time because yeah. of because uh, of overdosing. Mm. You know, I have a, a I have a thing about uh, it's been flagged up. Mm. Uh, if I was going to do anything really, we're talking about jumping out of a window, but my, my main thing is to overdose. Mm. You know, what I mean that's 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 the biggest fault line. See, I didn't tell anyone about the overdose. Mm. I, I, do you know? My, I left a note in my in my dressing gown, uh. and my mum reminded me that she found the note mm. Like, mm. Mm. months and months later. That broke me yeah. because yeah. it was a total realization that mm. I, I'd actually try to do it, and I meant it. Mm. You know, mm. and I meant it. You know, and that's the thing. Like, why would I want to take myself? Away, I, I really wanted to die when I before I come in. I, yeah. I just didn't want oh, to be. In. I remember that last yeah. night. It was the full. It was the fifteenth of December, and mm. I, I, I'm, I'm on my hands and knees. Not going to just take me tonight. Yeah. You know? yeah. And but I've, what it is is today is not like that. Today my life is it, is it works better. Mm. But I have to put the effort in. It's all about yeah. action. It's, you know. It's all about and action. it's the thing about men don't talk and and kind of uh, um, like what we don't talk about is to encourage a forum. I mean, I will. We will start doing uh, some Q and A's if anyone mm. would like to, uh, to to send us in a question or, mm. or kind mm. of ask us something while we're talking mm. or anything like that or we get any feedback. Yeah. You know, would you be happy to give them back feedback yeah, or, or whatever? Because yeah. there's, I guarantee you that there's someone that's been mm. in the situation you've been in and kind of uh, and and what yeah. it is this is all about help, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. You know, no. it's all and, about and help. also also there, there is a. Look, we've been a bit. I've I've been a bit doom and gloom about some of the things we've been talking about earlier. But let me tell you, you know, uh, my my worst days today mm. are far better than my best days when mm. I was in addiction. You know what I mean? Easily, without doubt. Yeah. It, it doesn't say that when I was in my early twenties, I didn't have fun times. Mm. But now you're talking about serenity. I have that peace of serenity. It's oh, man. It's my life now, all the time. Yeah. And I go down and I meditate mm. in front of <laughs> in you know, where I live in the Medway. I, I go down to. The, um, the seafront, mm -hmm. yeah, and I meditate for an hour and a half. So, how did you? Uh, I mean, uh, like what it is for someone that doesn't know about meditation. See, what it is, you know, like you explain to 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 what you do for your meditation, and right, so, uh, so, so it can help someone. Okay, so, in the, in the look, I think the best thing to say is 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 uh, at the end of the day, I, I was at a stage where nothing had worked in my life. Mm. And and I wasn't work. I was could mm. not run my own life. Mm. So there was a structure, and I went into a fellowship. And mm. I and I, it, my, my uh, fellow who was helping me was talked about, uh, you know, pray upon awakening mm. and meditate upon awakening. And do you know what? For over over five years, I still haven't missed one morning. 
do they call it good orderly direction? Good orderly direction, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, God. I'm, I'm, look, I'm a, I'm <laughs> yeah, a, I know you are. Yeah. Let me tell you, I'm a good person. I'm a, I'm you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a HP man. I love yeah. a, My life takes yeah. a lot better with a bit of HP sauce yeah, on okay. it. Yeah, okay. And the one thing I, 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 I've got, and I understand is, mm. is um, acceptance. So mm. I can accept whatever works for you. Self acceptance, so, absolutely. Yeah. Well, Self acceptance is also accepting that other people are on their journey, mm. and I'm not worried about how they do their journey mm. as yeah. long as they they're well. Mm. You know what I mean? Because ultimately, right? Yeah, whatever happens to us, but ultimately, it's our children mm. and our grandchildren who are going to suffer. Mm. You know, at, at the hands of our, our behaviours. So. I don't mind if someone said to me what their power is or, you know, if, if they've got something, it talks about mm. having a power great in themselves. I choose to call my God. Mm. Uh, I don't go off to church. I don't do anything. It tells me in a, in a book that I read about where you find God deep down within you, mm. all around me. Yeah. Right? And I use that as a motivating force mm. to live a better life. Yeah. Yeah. Good orderly direction. Absolutely. There you go. Yeah. So that totally works, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Both of us is working. Yeah, you know? of course it does. It works. So we don't have to, the semantics about what we want to call it. Yeah. It's working for you. Mm. It's working for me. So when I go down, I, first of all, I do it before, as soon as I open my eyes, the first thing I say is thank God for, uh, I'm alive. Mm. And then I go through a little ritual. It takes me about 15, mm. 20 minutes. Then I get the dog and we're off. Right? And we go down and uh, and then I, I will sit. And now all I do is meditate. So I'm sitting there, it's cold this, this time of year, and I'm all wrapped up. My dog's got his coat on as well, mm. and we, I'm just sitting there, and I just close my eyes, and I'm asking, yeah, let's say mm. for this, I'm asking the iPad God to come into my life yeah. and give me directions for the day. Yeah. Now, he's not going to come down to me and say, on the way home, Nick, you want to do a left ear and a right ear. and Because right I believe you've got in the way a lot of your directions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, you got in there first, yeah, didn't exactly. You? Right, yeah. you know, what I mean? you got in there first, and look what happens, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I can't run my own life, you know yeah. what I'm saying, with my directions. Yeah. It's ridiculous. And so, what I do is, I just that's what mm. I'm doing now. I can sit there because I'm fortunate mm. at having the time at the moment, mm. yeah. And I understand other people, I'm waiting on some pretty nasty operations mm. coming up. You know is that I mean? because of the eye? No, I've got, uh, I'm having knees done and I've got an aneurysm in my mm. main aortic okay. uh, t- tube down in my thing, which is, it's getting bigger. Mm. So that's going to have to be operated on. It's a quite a dangerous thing. Just think how much you would have used. Oh, like, well, we, we have stuff come up, don't we? And, yeah. then, and then we look at what, um, what we, what we, what we would use on. I, I would use on everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Do you know, do you know? Yeah. Do you know the first ninety days I come into recovery, I had my my ribs broken, my jaw broken. Mm. I got arrested. I had money stolen off of me, but I never picked up. Mm. You know, and and do you know what? The, the beauty of that, I was. Uh, you spoke about Rochester. Mm. Uh, One hundred and eleven days. I'm doing a share in Rochester. Mm. So the thing is, I I think myself like, wow, you know, like, I, and I never picked up. And for me, it's just one day at a time. Mm. And uh, you know, we, we, we can only but try. But uh, the thing is, we we don't only carry the message there. Yeah, we carry the message when we're out. We carry the message. You know, this is yeah. what it's all about. It's saying that there's a new way to live out there. Yeah. You know, if you Gosh. want it, it's there. You know, we can have it. We talk yeah. about life beyond our wildest dreams. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, to be able to go somewhere, mm. to be useful to some, to go mm. like you do into the prisons, just to talk about our story. Yeah. You know, to see the, the lights open, you know, look, I've been fortunate that I sponsor quite a few men and I've had men get back with their children, mm. you know, for going through this process because once they're, once they're working on themselves and they turn their life over to an eye power to God, these sort of things just go click, mm. click, click, click. They don't come immediately, mm-hmm. some of these things, but it just takes its time. Do you know what I mean? And you, that's where you have to have yeah. patience and humility and um, all these things which I thought was pure humbug mm. rubbish bullshit when I was growing up yeah and now I think you know what from my own experiences I, I understand it's worked for me yeah so I only talk about you know Rachel I'll take them when I'm taking them through our, you know our our, 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 um, <laughs> our program yeah right when I'm taking them through the program I say if I deviate from that that book that we mm. work from, I said, please take the night. So I'm going on an ego trip. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? Because all the directions are in there. It's worked for me. It's worked for millions of others. Do you know what I mean? 
And uh, all I know is when my head hits mm. that pillow tonight, yeah. I'll be going to sleep. Yeah. Mm. I'm not having to get up and pace. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying I'm perfect. This is every night. But most nights it is. Mm. I'm not pacing the thing. Now, when I wake up in the morning, I've got to tell you, you know, I'm a chronic alcoholic, I was. Mm. So I, as, I, as I open my good eye, mm. I, in my head I'm thinking, that bastard this, that bastard that, that thing, this, that and the mm. other, they're going to do, whoa, Nick, get, get yourself praying. You've got to take those thoughts away, come into my life mm. and leave me on this day. Yeah, I've got a shitty committee in my yeah. head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he your, makes decisions oh, for me. I love that. Yeah, he makes <laughs> decisions for me. <laughs> he, he, he makes decisions for me. Yeah, he says, Reg, why don't you do this? I go, no. Nah. Like that. Yeah, he's like, fuck it out. Oh, uh, you know what? Like, yeah. you're fashion police. Yeah, I can't wear that without. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's got to go. It's got to go. go. You know, it's yeah. got to go. And uh, I have this, like, this communication <laughs> with myself. See, the dialogue has changed over the years. I used mm. to say, I hate myself. Mm. I want to die. Oh, well, well, yeah, well, yeah, and yeah, today well. I'll say, I love myself Absolutely. and I want to live. Yeah, at all, oh, without that. Yeah. Absolutely. And would you believe that. that like now men can actually say that to each other? Yeah. I, 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 in, in, in our yeah. environment, we can. Yeah. You yeah. know, but in our normal environment, it would not work. Look, you know? that, that book's all, it's not too late to be great. Mm. Look, it's not being, I always say, it's not like being a Nelson Mandela or, or some mm. great person, you know, I don't know, whoever it is in your eyes. It's just to be a great dad. Mm. Try and be a great dad again. Try and be a great granddad. Mm. You know, all these sort of things. Yeah. You know, just to be, if you if you It's all that sick and false pride stuff, in it? Yeah. You know, you know, we thought we was, but yeah. we wasn't. Nah, that's Oh, right. that was you big know, for and, me. You know, yeah. and I'm, I'm, I'm in the, you know, just being the best person I can be. And I'm not worried about mm. either, I ain't got an erring doors at the moment, but erring doors or er that down there. I'm not bothered about What's your people. dog's name? Oh, Bruno. Bruno. So a big shout out to Bruno. <laughs> Bruno. Yeah, Bruno. You, Bruno. Yeah, you show Bruno this and Bruno go, thanks. Yeah. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, thank you, Nick. Yeah, I've had him. He's uh, coming up to 13 now and he's been a, mm. he rescued me on a few occasions. Mm. I bet so. You know, he's got, yeah. he's, uh, when, when my life. Why do they really say that, now? man's man's well, most friend? you know what he is? Yeah. Because you know when we talk about we don't talk? Yeah. I'll talk to Bruno. Well, there you go. You know, I can talk to Bruno. I really yeah. seriously can talk yeah. to Bruno. You know, and um, mm. look, that that thing about clearing the wreckage of your past, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, when I made amends and things like that, and to my ex-wife, to me, ex-girlfriends after I'd been divorced and that, and uh, that cleared up mm. a lot for me. It really did. Turning my life over to you know to God, it means a lot to me. Mm. And I go around every day yeah. making, you know, if I if I'm upset, look, mm. I, I'm not perfect. I can still, you know, I can still be Progress in someone's face. Perfection. Yeah, exactly. I can still be in someone's <laughs> face. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm fucking looking you know, at myself. I can be in someone's git. face. And, um, you yeah. know, and then I'm, I'm looking for them then. To, not to have a go at them again. Yeah. I'm looking to apologise yeah. for them. You yeah. know what I mean? I'm, so, I'm really sorry. Yeah. Well, we can do that today. Yeah. You know, absolutely. today anyway, look, um, a lot of give a big <laughs> thank out to sponsors. <laughs> Loved ones forever. And a big yeah. thank out to Nick. Who's come along? If you do get to get his book, what what platforms is this on? Amazon. Just Amazon. Go on Amazon. If you go on Amazon, uh, it's not too late to be okay. great. My story of recovery by Nikki Sewell. Nikki Sewell. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And uh, you know it's been fantastic, lovely. And uh, you come back on again? Oh, we'll yeah. Long, okay, course, we'll yeah. have another resident. Amongst friends, aren't we? Yeah, of course we are, yeah. But I'm so glad that we've been able to talk. Yeah. You know, and uh, maybe it's sort of like, see what it is, does is, yeah, two friends together. Yeah. You can sit and talk together yeah. as yeah. long as they talk. That's all you right. Know. Yeah, you understand what no, I mean? And it takes two of you, you know, no. unless, you're, unless you want to talk to yourself and that's, no. we know where that goes. We, 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 we know when people are going into a slip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The first thing they stop doing is stop talking. Well, they say the opposite to addiction is, is connection. Yeah. So get connected. Get connected. Yeah. Look, yeah. Anyone who's out there suffering, yeah. any man who's out there suffering. Let's Christmas is coming. Yeah. You know, because yeah. come on, like, yeah. you, you know what? I've got a place to go on Christmas that I'm, I've ended up doing something, ain't got the kids and everything. Cause I've already planned in my head mm. that I'm going to go and get myself somewhere safe. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, and, uh, um, you know, it's the best place for me. Mm. And also as well, I can get something out of it because I can give back. Yeah. You know, for me, it's all about the giving back and not the taking. And I, I try to do the best I, I can. I have to be honest, you know, my, my recovery really took off mm. when I started helping other, uh, mm. you know, people with addiction and mm. drinking problems and things like that. As soon as I started mm. giving them myself, yeah. 
talking to someone else, I went on a completely different plane. Well, look, it's been fantastic. Thank you very much, Nick. And uh, we'll leave it there. Thank you.